two things. Uh, first of all, it automates a substantial, um, so, so, so it sort of allows two things. The first is that it allows one to kind of use LLMs to search for information about all of these different areas. And it also allows people to interact with the tree in a new way. So potential funders or new talent might ask questions um, about this content um, as I will kind of sort of, sort of um, illustrate, illustrate later. Um, so um, I, I suppose the, 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 to kind of now turn to kind of explaining how this tree works. Um, so, so what's the idea here? So in most of these text trees, there is sort of a, a kind of a global goal. And in this case, the idea is that kind of the goal is sort of intelligent cooperation between sort of AI and humans. In some sense, the idea is that what all of these technologies in broad sense have together is that they enable sort of humans or, you know, humans and AI to cooperate in, you know, sort of productive ways, that nonetheless preserve, whoops, some important, uh, some important boundaries. Um, nonetheless, though, we do have sort of like three different types of nodes on this tree, um, and um, sort of the, there is a reason for that. So if you talk to most people that work in these areas, um, they will usually sort of focus on one particular technology. This will be true um, in particular in academia, but in, even to some extent in, in industry. Uh, nonetheless, if you sort of push people um, and sort of ask them to um, sort of come up with sort of a narrative about how a given technology might um, sort of how does it fit into the world? What does it what does it sort of do? Um, you know, people will come up with these various narratives and sort of based in our experience, they kind of sort of center in one of these sorts of five clusters. Um, one of them is sort of physical security and AI. The other is uh, cryptographic methods for complex cooperation. Uh, then we have sort of uh, pri sort of kind of pr privacy enabled AI systems. And then sort of more on the cooperation side, um, it'll be it'll be sort of sort of methods for preventing um, collusion and deception and methods for solving sort of principal and agent problems. So these are sort of the goal nodes that kind of organize organize a lot of this. Um, so the second type of node on this tree um, are these sorts of technology nodes. And the idea here is that um, th these are the nodes that as it stands sort of contain the most information. So, so we sort of had two constituencies in mind for this. One is sort of new talent and the other is perhaps potential funders. And so in order to do that for each of these technologies, there are certain key questions that you would kind of want to answer. So sort of what is this technology like, like sort of how, why are people excited about it? What would it allow people to do? How is its potential sort of perceived? Um, then a little bit about its history and maybe oops, just to sort of show all of these nodes are clickable. So this, for example, is about zero knowledge proofs, which is one of these sort of exciting cryptographic technologies. So there is something about, you know, what a technology is about, um, what, a, bit, a little bit about its history, and then sort of kind of most interestingly, whoops, stops scrolling, um, about like what are some of the main sort of projects and companies currently sort of, sort of, sort of working um, in the area. In the, in the future, it would be sort of great if there was sort of even more information that was on these sorts of nodes, for, for example, how much funding there is in a given area, or sort of things of that nature. Um, I mentioned before that this sort of graph tool allows people to sort of query the tree, and I will just kind of sort of demonstrate that um, with like these two particular queries. Um, just, whoops. So to just give one example, I have two, two queries like prepared. Um, so for example, let's say that you are a funder and you're interested in like, what is the difference between, um, between sort of two companies that appear on this, that appear on this tree? Whoops. And for example, the, the LLM tool is then able to, so it, it kind of uses information that is both on the graph as well as, for example, in the rest of the, the, the large language model, for example, to generate like a, a comparison between these companies that, for example, looks like this. Um, another type of question that you might, for example, want to ask is, um, let's say that you're, you're kind of new talent and you love working on, say, theoretical um, sort of questions, and you might, for example, ask it like, which company or project should I join if I want to work on more theoretical aspects of zero knowledge proofs? Um, and you can, for example, ask it something like that, um, and uh, it, it'll it'll once again sort of generate something something in the spirit of, of basically that that sort of an answer. Um, and then finally, what we have on on sort of this tree, which is perhaps kind of most interesting again to funders and new talent, are these so-called challenge notes. Um, which um, are basically supposed to answer the questions of like, what are the key things that are sort of stopping, um, you know, this technology from basically being deployed, from me, from me just sort of being being kind of real. Um, and to perhaps give a, like a concrete example of how it sort of all comes together, um, one idea is to focus, hold on just a sec. 
Okay, the, the screen seems to be frozen, but I hope it seems. So one area, for example, is homomorphic encryption, which sort of feeds into these two different types of general nodes. So for example, uh -huh, okay, something that we have noticed is that, um, so one, one area that we have here is sort of cryptographic areas that enable complex cooperation. And um, so a lot of people, um, so cryptography has had this big effect on sort of um, human affairs. It, it's directly relevant to sort of security. Uh, but most people still associate it with just like sort of secure cooperation. So the idea is sort of ciphers, um, encryption, sort of enabling people to sort of um, communicate with each other securely. But a lot of these novel technologies are all about sort of enabling people to cooperate in more complex ways while still preserving some kind of important privacy-related boundary. And homomorphic encryption is one of such technology. It has this potential. Um, and the basic idea is that it's sort of a way to sort of outsource computational work to somebody else. So the whole idea is that um, there might be somebody who is willing to perform some kind of computation for you, perhaps a large company or a data center, but you don't want it to know what it is sort of computing on. And there are there is sort of a various uh, there is sort of there is a set of techniques that basically allow people to do something something in this spirit. Um, but equally well, um, sort of homomorphic encryption is relevant to sort of these uh, privacy preserving machine learning frameworks. Um, so this is, for example. So a lot of data that people might want to train um, these sorts of models on um, is sort of personal, for example, medical records. Um, and people want to basically train models, but they don't want these models to contain um, sort of, you know, to, to, to basically contain this personal information. And homomorphic encryption is one of these sort of technologies that might, might kind of sort of enable that. And um, sort of on the other side, for example, if you now look at the sort of the challenges that exist on this, um, um, sort of, so what, what stops it from being developed? So something that is common to a lot of these technologies is, for example, that just there is a lack of developer tools. So a lot of these things are sort of very, very complex, and for them to be used by developers, people need to sort of develop, develop the right sort of APIs, and that is like an open issue for a lot of them. Um, the second issue here is that a lot of how the security is, is achieved uh, is by sort of making them much more inefficient than normal computation would be. So there are all of these like performance overheads um, that sort of crop up with, with a lot of these approaches. And another uh, sort of problem is these limited information types, and that is like the third node there, um, that basically sort of allow these, these methods to, to sometimes be able to do certain things privately, but perhaps not other things. Perhaps you know what you are computing, but not you know, what exactly the data is that you're computing on, and sort of, sort of, kind of challenges in that, in that spirit. Um, so um, th the reason these overviews are kind of useful is because, for example, one thing that has emerged is just, for example, what these cryptography-related technologies have in common. But to perhaps relate it more with the conference, something that was recognized about AI-related ones is that for a lot of these technologies, um, they are sort of phrased in terms of like, how do we protect AI systems against adversaries, in effect? Um, and so the whole idea is you have some vulnerable AI system, you want to protect it against an adversary, and a lot of these technologies kind of end up being relevant to that. Uh, but in the Bay Area, a lot of people are, are actually concerned that AI systems themselves might, in some sense, become threatening to people, that they might be sort of used, uh, that they might kind of start acting um, against us. And then each of these technologies kind of plays this um, interesting double double role in also perhaps um, sort of being being useful for enabling kind of to protect us against the, the AI adversary, so to speak. Um, so that's sort of that these are kind of the tech trees in a nutshell. Uh, this is very much the first version that we sort of hope to update with um, sort of kind of expert feedback, particularly as it relates to the challenges. Um, there is sort of a lot of, um, um, so, so the reason we see sort of potential in that is because what people often remark on is that sort of funders and new talent and exciting ideas and important challenges often have kind of this difficulty finding each other. Um, and having some kind of an overview like that um, is, is presumably sort of quite useful for solving that sort of a problem. And this kind of really emerges as one kind of tries to put something like this together. Um, in a lot of these areas, for example, people will have um, different conception about sort of the technology, you know, what the potential of the technologies is. People might kind of see them as developing in a different way. People will disagree on what the challenges are. Um, some of the most exciting new ideas are perhaps quite obscure, so many people don't even um, don't even know about them. And at the same time, um, there is also a kind of a constant foam of sort of new projects and ideas kind of popping in and out of existence. Um, and so there is also this sort of issue um, with with keeping uh, the the map current. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we're sort of quite excited about that. And if you would love to uh, like talk more about this, I would be delighted to chat. Thank you.